Oh, goodness. Okay. No pressure, guys. It's all easy. We're going to make this nice and simple. This is actually uh, my first time teaching and talking about, I guess, my practice. Um, but I really want to thank you, Sohan and Galbraith. Can we give them a round of applause? Because they are pillars of the Atlanta arts community. Um, and we all know working as artists or arts professionals in Atlanta that this is much needed, one, for the black arts community, but two, for artists in general, because Atlanta has you know, its own issues, but at the end of the day, we are still thriving and we are still working together. You can, oh, you can keep it. Um, and we're still working together to create a thriving arts community. So I just value the fact that you guys are here, willing to learn and willing to explore and understand what it means to be an artist. So this is going to be very interactive. I don't like talking at people. I like interaction, I like questions. If you have a question about anything that you see on the screen, please just raise your hand or stand up and talk. I wanna make this a dialogue, I wanna engage you, but I am going to be also prompting you to answer questions with me as well. So being an artist means being a business. Who believes that first? Well, that's good, the majority of you guys. <laughs> um, again, my name is Lauren Jackson Harris. I'm just happy to be here. Do I press space bar? So the first thing I like to tell artists, I've worked with some artists in here and spoken to them individually about their own practice, but speaking really generally right now, um, I just like to tell artists to get organized with what they're doing, whether it's in your studio, whether it's administratively, I know it's sometimes hard for artists to think about that, um, but you are your own admin at times, because at the end of the day, you don't want to pay somebody 10, 25%. I mean, you could pay me, but you, you don't want to pay somebody 10, 25% to manage your career. You want to kind of get an understanding of what it is that you have going on before you bring somebody in. So simple act of getting organized is the way to start. Oh, my little gif isn't playing. Okay, that gif is supposed to be a rapper doing like this, and he says I'm an artist in the song, but it's not playing. Um, but what are we talking about today? Inventory management, client and collector relationships, managing sales, and tracking, tracking your sales. So the first thing I like to talk about is inventory management. Um, does anybody know what inventory management means? Who can kind of answer that question about, what do you think I mean by that? Right, can it, did everybody hear her? She basically said it's a way to manage your pieces, how many pieces you have and the location of where they exist, which is correct. Um, inventory can be your available works, your sold works, and your exhibiting works. All of those things matter to know where they are. Just because you sell it and you pass it off to somebody doesn't mean you need to not know where it is. You should always know, okay, today I've sold this work to this person this is where it exists, this is how much I sold it for. So that's a part of inventory management, knowing where it is. Um, can anyone tell me how they currently keep up with their art? The location, exhibitions, and loans. Who wants to offer that? Speak up if you can. Okay, she keeps hers in her iPad. How about you? I like Excel. We're gonna talk about that too. Anybody else want to offer how they do it? Has anybody heard of Artwork Archive? That's a good start. We're going to talk about Artwork Archive. This is not a plug for Artwork Archive or any other application, but I am a fan of uh, these platforms. Um, so the most, thing, the most thing that's important when you think about inventory management sites, such as Artwork Archive, Art Cloud, I'll name some a little later, um, you know where your artwork is at any time. Location, records, exhibition schedule. I visited an artist studio two weeks ago I will not name her, but I walk in and she has a lot of her art stacked up on the wall like most artists do. They're all lined up. Some of them are rolled up in canvases. Um, and she said, I think this one is supposed to be going here and I think this one is there. I was like, who did you sell it to? I don't know, I just sold it and this gallery took it and they, it's, it's, it's almost like as if you, you like these are your babies that you're creating in a sense. You should know where they're existing and where they're going and the plan that you have for them instead of just having them stored in your, in your gallery. So I actually told her to create um, either an account with Artwork Archive or a Google Sheet or Excel Sheet in order to process thinking about what it looks like to where your work is going. What is in your, what is in your current studio? What has sold? And also what is currently exhibiting? And she could not list all these things. And when you have over 25 works, which is advice for me to say you should have at least 15 to 25 works on hand at the end of the day, those pieces need to be organized. You can't organize that in your mind. Some of you are parents. 
Some of you work full time. Some of you have other obligations to manage. So being more productive as an artist includes being organized. Um, monitor, it helps you monitor your production and sales with your artwork insights, making informed decisions about your art business, knowing where things are, knowing how long something has been sitting, knowing when to do a studio sale. Hey, I've had these 25 pieces just sitting here for two years. Inventory wise, what can I do to market myself and get these pieces out to, pro to, sell, to sell those works? Or is there, some, is there an exhibit that I can um, submit these to to get these pieces seen? Because right now they're just collecting dust. So in, knowing what is sitting long, it helps you think about marketing your work and also having finding opportunities for them. Um, it also helps you print um, consignment reports, portfolio pages, invoices, gallery labels, Artwork Archive actually helps you create um, tear sheets, which is basically a sheet that you send out. If somebody, somebody says, hey, I saw this work on your Instagram or your website, I wanna know more about it. Artwork Archive, having that inventory available, all you do is click on the artwork and it pulls up all the information for it and you're actually able to email that, that client directly. That's also what we're gonna talk about in terms of client management, inventory. All these things are synonymous with one another. They're all connected. Um, create your own artist website, Artwork Archive, Art Cloud, Art Base, um, Art Binder. All of these, all these platforms help you create a website. Right now, you can have, you know, a Squarespace or a Weebly or all these independent websites, but keeping it in one place manages your productivity even better. Um, you can also keep track of your exhibitions and obligations. Who has had more than one exhibition at a time with artwork and being shown? How did you manage that process, knowing how many pieces you had and where was it? How did you manage yourself? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because you had a manager, but did you know every step that she was doing to do so? So do you think that you could have done it without your manager? Yeah, so it's like, it's sometimes people even have managers. Some artists have managers. I have been that for some artists in certain projects. It's really good if you know you have more than one thing going, have a manager process that all for you. But at the end of the day, she, the question I asked her was like, did you know the steps that she took with your practice. If you have, you do work with somebody, you'd still need to know everything that is happening with your pieces, what contracts, what emails are going out, what, um, when your artwork is being shipped, where is it going to, when is it coming back? You should know all these things even if you're working with a gallery or a manager. That is still inventory management, knowing where your stuff is. And so this is an example of um, Artwork Archive. As you see, I don't know if you can see the different areas. It has files that you can update, um, ma maintenance records. Maintenance records is important. So like say that you entered your artwork into a gallery exhibition and they said, hey, there's some nicks and stuff on it or I got damage. Knowing when you updated those things are, are important because over time, if you're working with uh, artwork that is collectible, you want to make sure you, you know, hey, I touched this um, stitching up, I touched the edges up, I, the framing broke and I had to reframe it, I had to restretch it. You have to know when those things happen because over time, when all of you become famous artists, know it for a conservator to maintain your artwork, they have to know what was already done to the artwork. Um, also appraisal history, which basically means pricing history, if it's been priced, if it's been loaned out, knowing, keeping a track of that. Um, location history, limited edition runs. So say that something is, if you have a special print that gets released as 20 editions, that you can also put in, hey, I did 20 pieces for this individual edition, and it helps you track each of those 20 pieces. Um, and you can also put in customer history, current location, Chicago office, different um, assigning purchasing info. As you see, it's an easier way to visually see what this one piece of art has gone through. It's literally the history of this artwork. Um, it exhibits professionalism as well. When I work with artists and they're unorganized, it's hard for me to continue to work with them if I know, like if I have to go back to them, I'm like, okay. I know I need three weeks to deal with this person because I know they're not organized, but it looks better when you're working with a curator or an institution or organization that you have your stuff ready to go and ready, ready to be presented. Does anybody have any questions about that? Anything about inventory management? Yes. 
export what? Yes, you can. So anytime, anything that you're doing, okay, I'll go back. Um, so if you're using Art Cloud, Artwork Archive, you can actually, so say somebody you know, says, I saw this piece of work, I want to export it. You can download it and send them a tear sheet. You can send them any information um, that is within that individual artwork. But you also have to do the work to input the information correctly. So if, you not, if you're not keeping track of it at the moment that it happens, because a lot of the times we'll have this inventory, you'll have a picture of it, or you may not have a picture of it, but you have the title. But you have the title, but you may not have the specs or you have all the other information, but you don't have the location where it last was. You also have to do due diligence to keep up with every aspect of what is happening. So that's like, if you know, as soon as you're saying this, somebody is interested in this, there's a, there's a CRM, there's a customer database also attached with Artwork Archive and our cloud to where if somebody shows interest, you can actually put that person's name, contact information into that, and they were interested in this piece. And that way you can follow up with them saying they were interested in this piece at this date, I need to follow up with them. And a lot of the times I like Art Cloud because it'll give you an alert to tell you, hey, you need to follow up with this customer about this piece because they showed interest at this date and this time. Especially when it relates to Articulate, it's a one night event, right? So you need, how do you capture your inventory that was there and know that these six pieces that you're showing at Articulate, how do you keep up with that? Hey, this showed at Articulate, this client was interested in it. The systems like this will keep track of that for you. Whether you're using an Excel spreadsheet, whether you're using Artwork Archive or Art Cloud, knowing where it is and who was interested in it is very important for managing your sales and your trajectory. Any other questions about inventory management? Courtney? Yes, it also is, because so you can also, this is just a one screenshot of one individual artwork. So say somebody wants to know about your available works, you can actually um, tag them and categorize them in a way where you can say this one is available, this one is sold, and if somebody is interested in saying all of your available works, you can just export all of the individual works, select them all, and send them a nice PDF via email. Now how easy is that? Right, thinking about if somebody says, what do you have available? I wanna see some of your recent commissions. Even commissions, commissions need to be sh shot in there, not just things that you're creating on your own. If somebody wants a commission, I want to see examples of your work, having them collectively in one place makes your life easier. So if I come to any artist today, I'm gonna to speak on you with the hat. If I come to you today and I said, hey, I wanna see your, I wanna see 10 pieces, how would you do that with me right now? Sing to your website? All your available works are updated? Okay, so if I, but, so you're, you're giving me work to do as a client, right? No. If you're sending me to your website, I've already gone to your website. That's why I'm asking. So if you're telling me to go to your website, you're creating more steps for you to take, for you have to do work. But if you have a way to say, if you're not already creating a PDF that you're updating all the time, or you don't have an inventory management page, you're sending me to your website, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die off because you're giving me work to do. As an interest, as a curator, as a space, I'm going to be like, no, I'm good. Okay, Con, he's not serious. I can go to your website. I'm, I've already been to your Instagram. I've already checked you on. I've already looked you up on whatever news thing you've been on. So it's thinking about, not to like condemn what you just said, but, but it's an example, like just thinking about, um, think about your productivity as an artist. What would make it easier for you to just create art? is being organized. Yes, you had a question. Mm -hmm. You do have to have a website. Mm -hmm. Right. So how, so let me ask you, let me retort that with a, a question back in a way, or rhetorically. Um, if you send me to your website and I see your available works, I have to contact you again. A lot of the times clients fall off at that point. I'm not saying that it's not good for you. It's great that you have an updated website which are available works as you should. But also if somebody to capture the client 
and to know where they're coming from. If they came from Instagram, if they came from a conversation while you were out, if they came from um, word of mouth through somebody else, send them to your website. Most likely they've checked it and they've seen it, but how do you capture them? You capture them by getting their contact information, not just saying, here's my website, let me know. You still have to go back and still talk to them and engage them and say, hey, which ones were your favorite? What do you think? It's just, it's less of a touch. If you say, these are my available works, I'm happy to talk with you through them, let's schedule a time and date. Instead of just saying, here's my website. Here, you can also, hey, if you see anything else, if you see anything else that you like, my website has a full inventory list, but these are things that I think that you would like. You know, it's just a way for you to have a better type of engagement. Um, and managing your inventory. Websites are great, but also having less of a touch in capturing the client is, to me, the most important for you. Any other questions around inventory? Okay, we're moving forward. So this kind of leads into client-collector relationships. Uh, let me pull up. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. I meant to action the applications that I spoke about earlier in terms of what, how to manage your inventory is Artwork Archive. Art Cloud, Art Logic, Art Base, and Art Binder. And those are easy to search just by searching for art inventory applications or software. But my top two favorite are Art Cloud and Artwork Archive because of the usability of it and the functionality of it is really easy. Okay, for this next part, I want to bring somebody up to kind of do like a cut, like a play. Um, I want to see if somebody will role play with me, me as the client, you as the artist, and I want you to pitch me. So is anybody willing to volunteer themselves to have a conversation with me about how they engage a client? Who, raise your hand, don't be shy. Anybody? You wanna come? Come on. Give her a hand. All right. So say, I want, you to, I want you to act as if you're at, come on, I want you to act as if you're at Articulate. Okay. And I'm looking at your piece on the wall. Oh, you know, tell me about this piece a little bit. Tell me more about you. Well, I'm not, I'm not perfect, so my- No, you don't have to be. You don't have to be. <laughs> I just want to see you. Well, I have an art piece. Would you like to see it? I'm looking at it. What's up? What's how, tell me about it. Well, it's my imagination. It's my, uh, everything about me. Mm -hmm. I'm inspired by manga and anime. Okay. And I'm wondering, you want to buy it? You haven't told me enough about it. That's what so, I'm That's <laughs> I struggle out like, oh. Tell me, tell, me a little bit of, tell me a little bit about your practice and what it means to you. Why would this piece be important to me to purchase? Oh, my God. That's what I struggle with. Struggle with. <laughs> um, no, it's practice. This is just practice. Okay. No it's practice. All right. So, um, the reason why it's so important to me, mm -hmm. I've been drawing for like at least okay. like 15 years. I first started as an anime artist okay. and back in church. I was first introduced to anime when I was in church. I don't put Pegasus in church anymore, but yeah. it's important to me because it expresses my, expresses my imagination, it expresses who I am. And it might be helpful for you because I do art myself to inspire, inspire other people. See? Just a little push, right? That yeah. was beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. I'll take um, So basically, and with a little push, she was able to, I literally was like, oh, well, shit, I should buy it, right? Like, she, she told me her why. Knowing your why behind the work, thank you. Um, knowing her why behind the work, just don't be like, hey, you like it, you wanna buy it? Having, having to draw, go into your heart. There is a visceral feeling that collectors and, and people that are art enthusiasts feel when we know you're connecting with your own piece. That you don't just wanna buy it, uh, you, don't, you don't want me to buy it to just you know, get that money. The money's gonna come, but are you connecting with your buyers? Um, it's a part of being confident. It's a part of being prepared. The more prepared you are, usually the more confident you are. Um, and it leaves behind, I always say leave behind a good memory. Leave them with something that'll have them coming back. A lot of the time, sometimes art does go away. Like I think at Articulate, I remember there was one piece by Miriam Moma that I was like, I want that one. And I walked away and I came back and it was gone. And I was very mad and I was like, well, I connected with it. But I mean, Mary Mom was a friend, so I was like, let me just support her anyway. And I purchased something else that spoke to me. But at the end of the day, there was this feeling that I knew I should have stuck with it. I wanted to buy it. I knew, I know about her art. I look into art and I was like, I want to get this now. But it was also in this moment of like, 
If you don't capture the don't capture the buyer in that moment, leave them with a good memory. They already have the feeling that they're seeing while they're staring at it. It's up to you to say, I am me. This is what is going to be hanging in your house or your office or wherever for your mom, for your sister, your daughter, whoever it's for. They want to have a story to tell for that person that when somebody comes to their house and they see that art on the wall, they want to have their own story to tell. I have a story about every piece of art that I have in my home. Whether it's quick, like somebody just gave this to me and I thought it was really dope, versus something that was an emotional connection. A range of emotions can happen with your art, with people that are looking at it. It's up to you to make the connection for them. Um, stick with what you know, don't embellish. Like people, humans, we tend to kind of be like, oh, I'm this, I'm this. Just kind of stay grounded in who you are in your practice and be confident in that. Don't, if, there's some, if the buyer or the collector or this person asks something that you don't know, it's okay to say, you know what? I can't answer to you right now, but give me your number, your email, and I'm gonna get you back. That's also a connection for you to get their information to say, I can't do that right now, but I can answer this. Oh, do you have this in this color or this scheme? Actually, I don't work in that color scheme, but we can talk about commissioning a piece, right? If you don't have the answer, it's okay to come back to it. It's okay to build that bridge and say, let me get back to you. I can create something special for you. I don't work in that medium, but we can discuss something. Or maybe even it's an opportunity for you to connect with another artist that you know does work in that medium. Allie, you bid to somebody else. That's also a part of client management and connectivity. You don't know what that artist that you alley-ooped that opportunity to, that artist may circle back to you and do the same thing. Client relationships don't stop at a client. They start with the community that you're building, but also with your intention and your confidence. Um, make eye contact. You know, a lot of times artists will kind of look in the space, and I've, I've talked with some artists, and they're like looking down at the floor or like, not sure or not you know, of themselves, make eye contact, be confident in who you are. Um, and you don't need to go into detail about your personal self if you don't want to. She got personal because that's also made her connect with the piece and made a connection with me. If there's things that you don't want to divulge, you don't have to. Sometimes it's a way, because sometimes pieces are so personal that you create from your heart that you may not want to go there in that moment at Articulate but you can at least find a way comfortably to practice how you can get personal, but not divulge too much. Um, also, a really important thing um, to capture, the reason why I'm saying capture their numbers or their Instagrams or their emails is creating outreach. Market yourself. You are a brand. Create newsletters. Even when you apply to Articulate before it happens, you should be already plugging, hey guys, I'm gonna be here. Create an, if you have a newsletter, hey, I'm gonna be at Articulate. Make sure you come out. Make sure they got their money ready when they come that day. Don't tell your friends that you're having a show that day. You should already, they should already know weeks before that to prepare their dollars to purchase your work. It's okay to say, hey, I'll have my works that are available within this price range available at this date. Come support me. So the benefits of doing this, this, this was a gift too, it's not planned. <laughs> um, it, the purpose of doing, um, the benefits of doing client relations is sales. We all want monies, we all need the monies, but you have to be consistent with your pricing. That's a whole nother conversation. You have to be consistent with your pricing, you're knowledgeable of your pricing, but also knowledgeable of yourself and your audience. Um, follow up game strong, that is a way for me to just say, in any relationship, follow up. Sometimes things don't go through. Sometimes clients will ghost you. Um, who has been ghosted by a collector? I'm sure everybody can raise their hand. Right, I have. Um, even in sales, as a person in sales, I have been ghosted so many times. But guess how many emails they got from me before they, when they ghosted me? At least six. They got a DM, they got an email, they got a cold call. So, I mean, back in the day, I used to actually send letters too. So that's how old I am. But at the end of the day, making those touches and building that, Sometimes, even if you made those six things, I've had people ghost me, but two years later see something else. We're like, I remember you, I should have bought that. Yeah, you should have. But now you're buying, well, let's, let's talk now. And it still is, they still know that I tried, right? Staying consistent with that. Um, once you, if you maintain relationships, you also retain collectors. If you maintain them, however, where you see them out, if you are following up, if you're networking, you also retain your collector base. Sometimes collectors will buy one piece, a lot of the times they'll buy another, if not another. 
Collectors, when they like your work, they'll buy multiple pieces and they'll also tell their friends. It's like their home becomes a personal gallery for your work. So consider that when you have a collector, stay in touch. Keep them abreast on what's going on. Hey, I have some new pieces I created. Are you interested in seeing them? Send a newsletter out so you don't even have to do the one touch. If you have a newsletter, a lot of these, a lot of these um, platforms like Artwork, Archive, and ArtCloud, they have um, marketing platforms, marketing abilities now where you can create newsletters. Artwork Archive does. Um, word of mouth is also another really great way, which is why I'm saying when, it's, when you alley-oop something to another artist or you talk to make another connection, word of mouth is really the biggest, is a really big way. If you have an attitude at an event one day, somebody gonna hear about it. If you were mean or abrupt to a client or somebody, you don't know who you're talking to a lot of the time. You don't know who is in the room. People watch without even having to talk with you. They watch your demeanor. They watch your professionalism. They see how you interact. So just be confident and always know when you're out in space, especially Articulate, there's a ton of people at Articulate that could also find you other opportunities. So just consider that. And hold yourself accountable um, with anything that you do. Am I good on time? Okay. Um, another big thing, okay, this is kind of leading into the marketing sales and tracking. Um, so money makes the world go round. How are you managing yours? Does anybody know how much they made in 2020, 21 in sales? Raise your hand if you do. <laughs> but do you know now? Like, are you like, you like, you know, in this, in this, in 2021, I did this range of, you don't know your range. So nobody raised their hand about knowing how much they made. One, two, three people. Four people out of 45 people. I, you, oh, sorry, I'm gonna count you. Well, that's, you cheating because you had so hey, she gonna tally that for you, George. <laughs> but yes, I'll count that five, five artists know. If you don't know how much you made from your sales in 2021, you have a lot of work to do. We are halfway through 2022. That means, did you not do your taxes as an independent artist? Raise your hand if you did. You so hey, we got clients. Guys. <laughs> okay, I'll say, so this is even more important. That's because I thought it would be more hands to know how much you made. Like I know how much I made even as an independent contractor. You are an independent contractor too. As an independent artist, you have to, if you're making sales, not even knowing how much you made, you're just, that means you're just selling work. And it's going in your bank account. And you buying your groceries. And you buying your shoes and your purses. So you have things that you have, you have profit, but you also have losses. You don't know what that is. That, you can't put towards your practice even if you don't know how much you're putting into it. So a lot of the times, a lot of these platforms that I told you, like ArtCloud and Artwork Archive, whether it's an Excel sheet or a Google sheet, you should be tracking your income and your losses, always. Um, managing the sales helps you maintain the artwork details in one place, your price list. You know how much something you sold for in 2021 was. That means when it gets to 2025, you can build your trajectory based on that. You were selling at this pace at 2018, you bumped it up in 2021, you bump it up again in 2024, you bump it up again, you're tracking yourself. It helps you build, like somebody say, how did you get to selling your work to 20,000? Well, I just started. That doesn't help me know where you grew from. Some people don't come out selling work at 20,000. There's a reason why there's um, an art market, even though it's the wild, wild west, um, but there's still a trajectory that you can make with your work. If you wanna start at 20,000, you can't stay there for 10 years. Are you consistently selling at that price? If you are consistently selling at that price, you have to know, hey, I've been doing this for about 10 years at this price. I think it's time to bump it up a little bit. So managing your sales and knowing what you're selling at is very important. Um, also creating invoices. Who creates invoices or receipts when they sell work? That's good, that's a good majority. What are platforms are y'all using to do that? Like Squarespace? PayPal, those cash apps, cash app don't count, okay? Cash, cash app don't count, y'all. PayPal is a little better. They at least have an invoicing system, but they can track it. But um, that's good that the majority are doing invoices. So if you have invoices, you should already know the total of sales you have. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm just, but you should, but it's, but it's six months into 2022. 
You should know what you did in 2021 because if you already know what you did in 2021 and December 30, 31st, 2021, you already know, okay, 2022, I want to do this. I made 50,000 in 2021. 2022, I want to get to 75. How can you manage your sales if you don't know what you're bringing in? How can you build your trajectory and build on your sales if you don't even know what you're bringing in? So that's a good way to think about it. Like I made this much, now I have a new goal. Businesses do that. Businesses do five-year plans for their sales goals. You are a business, consider that. Um, so yeah, p &L, profits and losses is a way to log your expenses. How much are you spending when you go to Blick or art stores? How much are you investing in yourself? Does anybody know that? How much they spend on supplies every month? Raise your hand if you do. Two artists. Three. I know George knows. I'm not going to let him read for him. But it's a, it, so if you're not thinking about each month I'm buying eight canvases, I'm buying this much paint, and you're selling at a certain price, you don't even know how much your expenses are versus your profit. So you don't even know your margin of what you're keeping for yourself. Not enough hands were raised, so we have to really consider that. How much are you investing in yourself in terms of the supplies you're, you're getting in, you're, you're buying versus how much money are you bringing in? Knowing that margin is very important. Um, and creating standard pricing is also really um, a good practice that I like to tell artists. So instead of just guessing based on size or based on how much time you put into it, based on the amount of supplies you use to build it, knowing your pricing and create standard pricing. Don't just be like, oh, I think that's about this much. I think that's about this much. Oh, this might be 2,000, this might be eight. Stay consistent because a lot of times collectors, especially in the Atlanta community, we already know. If somebody tells us one price and then I buy it for another thing, we gonna talk about it. There's been a lot of times where I've purchased something. I'm like, well, he made me pay this much. I want, why did it, why did it change? Did you have a special relationship? No, it was just at a different event. Changing your prices for special events makes it inconsistent. Stay consistent with your prices and stay and keep a even if it's like a block, if you, have, if you work in a standard size, if you have a 60 by 40 and a 36 by 36 or a 24 by 18, you should already know how much you want, to want for each thing, right? Does everybody understand that? Questions? Pricing is such a, whew, don't get me started. That's a whole nother lecture. Um, generally, did anybody hear his question? He was basically saying, how do you know when to bump up your prices, right? Um, and when to do that. I kind of, there's no rubric because the art world is the wild, wild west, okay? But I would advise that if you are consistently selling, say that you have a standard size of 36 by 48, right? You've sold several pieces at that size at $5,000. And it's been shown a few times at different galleries or different art fairs. I would say after the, probably about the 10th sale, like eight or ninth sale around that range, and it's been shown a lot, then you can definitely bump up, right? I would, I always tell people like every six months, think about how, how much you've sold. If you have 24, even if it's like a 12 by eight by 12, and you've sold 20 of them at, $500 each or $1,000 each. Now I'll say, okay, this has been consistent enough. I can, dump, I can bump this up a little bit, a couple hundred dollars, and start grandfathering those prices, but you have to plan for that. And that's a part of the money management side that I'm speaking of. You don't know when to bump up if you're not tracking whether it's already been happening, right? And so you won't know when to bump your prices up because you're not tracking it. So keep track of what you're selling at and stay consistent with it so that it's easy to speak on. Any other questions? No. Um, benefits of this, and I think I, I, I like to say that Isohe would agree with this. Manage your cash flow in and out, in and out. Anything in, anything out. Receipts, <laughs> she, she smiled. Receipts are important for taxes. You are an independent business. Think about, oh, you have a question? Oh. Okay.
What's too soon, though? What's too soon? No, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you've sold consistently at least up to 10 pieces at a certain price, I think it's time. I think it's definitely good to grandfather up. But planning that. You can also use, you know, your marketing tools and newsletters and outreach to say, hey, guys, I'm growing as an artist. I've had these great opportunities in the last year that are giving me more visibility. Just so you know, hey, client collectors, I'm bumping up my prices. So collect now because next year I'm, I'm, I'm coming a little higher than that. So you can also communicate that, but that is, it's, there's no too soon. I think too soon is like, you sold one piece at 10,000 and the next one you're gonna sell at 15. So if it's, you've only sold one piece at 10,000, the next piece can't be 15. People are gonna be like, wait, hold on. Wait, the last one you just sold at Articulate was 10 and now you're coming back and it's 50. what in the world? So it's like, you have to think about the trajectory and the plan for that. Um, and that's scaling your pricing structure. That's what that next bullet is, scaling that, knowing when to do so. But also know your worth. Um, a lot of the times, I'm gonna get, this is one story I like to tell. Um, while I was at Zucat, there was one artist that had shown this painting twice before and it hadn't sold. It was in, ironically, a Bombay Sapphire exhibition that we had at Zucat. Um, and he priced the work at $75,000. It was big and it was delicate and it was beautiful, but he priced it at $5,000. And he said, we had to advise them on if it should be sold as that. And I told him it should not be more than 10,000. And I'm gonna tell you why. I looked at his CV, I looked at his showing experience versus, you know, at the time we were showing Charlie Palmer's work next to his. Charlie Palmer was selling between 10 and 25 at that time in 2018. I cannot justify Charlie Palmer's roster and his CV next to this artist who has only shown twice before, only in Atlanta at 75,000. You also have to know your market. I said, based on Atlanta market, 75,000, we won't even see unless it's a car or a Birkin bag or whatever, how much they are. But like we, it's like you have to know your market, the audience that you're presenting to. This was a an exhibition of a contest where artists won the opportunity to show. And he was pricing it at this price. And I said, this is not the right price for you. But he advised against it. And guess what? I saw him th three months ago in front of Urban Grind. And I asked him, hey, whatever happened to the art piece? He hadn't sold it yet. And it's been four years. And he told me he priced it at that because he put time into it. All artists put time into their work. All artists put heart into their work. But four years later, that work hadn't sold. But if he would have took my advice in 2018, it would have sold already. So that's why I'm saying consider your market, consider the advice of professionals, even if, you, if, you, if you're not sure. Um, and also helping, knowing your, knowing your sales and tracking your sales is important for your budget knowing how much you can spend the next month for this exhibition. So say you get another gig and you're saying, well, I only got this much money to put towards this, but knowing when each month, how much you're going to budget towards supplies, how much you're going to budget for a project. Say you don't have some projects that are not coming for a little while, because we all know the ebbs and flows. When you're in that ebb and you're looking like, when's the next thing? You already have a budget planned for how much you're going to invest. So when that next project comes, you're, you can be prepared to do so. Again, it's simply <laughs> getting organized, right? It's just getting organized. Um, it increases your productivity. Your professionalism is always on 100 because you're prepared for business conversations, business interactions with organizations, with galleries. Um, it gives you insight on your career, which is the most important because you know what you're producing. You know what pace you can work at. If you only produce five works a year, because some artists work slow, know that about yourself. If you can produce 20 in one month, know that about yourself. But you also have to know that investment that you're banking into yourself. You are a business, consider that. The fact that a lot of people didn't raise their hand that they did taxes or tracking their sales, you have to consider, so you're, you're, consider yourself as an individual business separate from your full-time job or any other income. Because I, I have to you know, report to the IRS as an independent curator. I also have to report to IRS as a business owner. And I also have to report to IRS as a full-time employee. Three times, and Isohe is the only reason why I'm still sane. 
So consider that, that you are a business in yourself. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay, I wanna leave you with some last little bit, little tidbits. Manage your social media as if it's a quick look into who you are as an artist. Make sure your name, your profile name is identifiable to who you are, whether it's a moniker or whether it's your full name. Knowing for some reason right now in the last pandemic, Instagram has been a great tool to find artists to work with, to be honest. And I hate to say that sometimes, but it is. It's a great tool. Make sure your page reflects who you want to be, how you want to be seen to curators and to museums, to art spaces. Um, you are your brand. Market yourself as such. Read about what's going on in the art world. Make sure you're subscribed to Artsy, Artnet, Art News. Knowing the trends and the market, knowing the people who are important making the decisions, knowing the opportunities that, um, can, that you can get, seeing what other artists are doing. Following Art News is very, very important. Culture Type is a Black-owned newsletter that produces news about the Black art world. She is based here in Atlanta. Culture Type is a great newsletter to follow. Um, but Artsy, Artnet, um, Financial Times creates a lot of great art news. Um, the Art Newspaper. Follow these newsletters to follow up, to know what's going on in the art world. Also, build with like-minded people. Connect with people that offer you support and opportunities, such as this, this fairy space. If you don't know somebody in here, shake their hand. Get to know them, because you're sitting in the same room, and most likely you're gonna see them again. Um, and also, stay focused. I know right now in this time of pandemic and racism and loss and strife and just struggle in a way, there's still joy in creating your work. If you need to take a mental break, do that. It's okay. But stay focused and know that if you take this break, that you're maybe taking notes, sketching, find another medium to work in. Sometimes changing your medium drives you back to your main medium. Maybe take a class, maybe take a, take a pottery class, take a photography class, feed yourself creativity when you are bored with what you're creating. That just means you need to be, find inspiration somehow, but stay focused on building your creativity. Um, and some of the favorite accounts I like to follow that I think offer great um, insight for artists, there's three that I really like. Um, his name is I am D Muse on Instagram, I A M D M U S E. He offers really great business insights for artists. A second one is PX Contempor PXP Contemporary. Um, she is the founder of a gallery, but she also works in art business, but she creates really great reels that offer really quick insights to how to engage with galleries. And then Art World Learning is another one, which is kind of a bigger um, entity. Alan Schwartz is a big time collector billionaire who has funded the Art World Conference. They don't do conferences anymore, but they do art, art learning platforms where you can take free, um, sessions with arts professionals teaching you about the art world, the business of networking with galleries. So those three accounts I think are really, really important to follow. So that's IMD Muse, PXP Contemporary, and Art World Learning to follow on Instagram. And that concludes my presentation.